today uh, I am accompanied by my amazing colleagues, Juana Lester and Daniel Chiovenu. They both have an active role in sales and business development, and they develop business um, using ABM techniques. All of the tools, technologies, methodologies, everything that we talk about is based on our own experience. We share everything, you know, uh, clear, um, for example, templates, um, all, all sorts of methodologies that you can use. And it's all based on experience. So you can ask, you can try it yourself, see if it works for you and so on. Uh, I am Laura Dana Nicolai. I have more than 20 years. Actually, I just counted more than 25 years in marketing for technology businesses, which sounds quite a lot. Um, I am the CEO of multiple businesses, including NNC services. Um, and I have, um, I think, an interesting track, track record as an woman entrepreneur. I'm a board chair in the Entrepreneurs' Organization. Uh, I'm a Forbes Business Council member. I worked with Gardner. I trained a lot of ISVs on the Microsoft ISV channel. Um, I'm a HubSpot trainer and so on and so forth. I won't bore you with <laughs> the certification. Um, and now I'd love to, you know, understand um, how, how did you land it up here? Uh, we actually used some of the techniques that we're going to share today to invite you here. So basically most of you are here because of an invitation you saw or accepted via LinkedIn. So I know that now we're best friends and buddies, but you'll also get to see how we managed to invite you. And you could use some of those templates and some of the workflows that we used to do this with your own perhaps network of contacts. We don't like the term customer here, we believe a lot in partnerships, we believe a lot in collaborating, we believe a lot in the positive you know, results of networking. Uh, so we don't uh, hunt for customers, we don't trap anything, we don't have quick <laughs> sort of, uh, how, how can I say, traps for customers, we don't have hacks, we actually have strategies that work. Um, now, uh, I actually based this off the questions that I got. This was the session we put together after many people, including on the EO network, which I love, by the way, uh, the Entrepreneurs Organization Network, started asking me questions. So they asked, you know, why would I use AI in marketing? This is fresh off the oven, HubSpot to put together a state of the marketing state of AI marketing in class, where they show that AI tools give marketing teams, you know, 12, more than 12 hours per um, marketing person and more than 25, 26 additional working days in a year. This is more than a month, right? And I think that 12.5 is just the beginning. For me, I can tell you that it saves about 20 to 30 hours of work. I'm not kidding. Even for example, to prepare this event, we used a lot of AI and we're gonna show you how, but basically I noticed that anybody that uses AI, even at you know average kind of level, like not really, really beginning, but maybe understand a bit more about prompting, about different tools, more than chat GPT, uh, it, it saves at least half of their time, right? So you can do so much more. What I love is not only it saves me time, but I get like 10 times more results. Uh, so instead of, for example, writing just one um, social media post, I can now write 10 and then just go through them quickly and adjust them to my, um, you know, post uh, style or writing or something and then just post it. And there's tools, for example, like um, Okoya, let's say, which actually take everything from writing all the way to posting. So this is what I love when a tool does more than just what, you know, that little prompt response, which is kind of fun at the beginning of the year, but we're now past that adoption curve. Um, 
Now, what is ABM? So I know that we're quickly going through this, and I know that some of you are pros when it comes to what's ABM, what's AI, and so on. Um, so I'm not going to bore you too much, but basically ABM is the reversal of the traditional lead generation and prospecting. And why we do that is because in B2B, in high ticket sales, um, you know, we don't have um, million of target customers. Okay, we don't have, let's say, Coca-Cola style, everyone is my customer, everyone should buy a Coke or something. In ABM, we have a decision maker at a big enterprise, or a, I don't know, even if, if it's an average size enterprise or something, but if it's high ticket, and high ticket usually means more than $20,000 a year. I have this year, so beginning of this year, I've seen that uh, ABM tactics are applied even for staff with more than a couple of thousand um, average revenue per user per year, right? So which means that ABM is going down to the bottom and bottom level of the what high ticket means. It's not uh, basically the high uh, price sale that we used to know. And why is that? Because of course in SaaS, uh, if the um, average, let's say duration of a customer is like three year or uh, five years or something, those couple of thousand per year become a really interesting amount. But I've seen this applied even with luxury goods and so on. So ABM means that we target specific accounts and we start with account selection. So we know for sure, let's say, I don't know, um, Ericsson is my customer or Toyota or Motorola is my customer. And I go there and I D to identify the contacts, to nurture that conversation. I sometimes spend much more in nurturing, and this is the process that will take longer than actually in the traditional sense where, you know, I go, I collect a huge database, then, you know, I see what's their interest and so on. Now, mind you, um, buyer intent is still paramount. So that doesn't mean that I don't look at buyer intent. Uh, on the contrary, things like um, there's um, Zoom Info, for example, which, show, which shows me buyer intent very well on this kind of ABM model, right? So I still look at buyer intent. I still want to land when they are ready to buy. But I just start off in the other sense, meaning I know very well who is my targeted persona. And this is where Juana is going to show you how you can identify your target persona and what's the easiest, best way to reach out to them. Okay. Um, now, if you still have questions about ABM, there's a ton I can tell you, but even better, we have a pre-recording course in terms of what prospecting in the ABM model is. And I will share the link at the end of this session so that you can join if you like to, and, and you can go through that at your own pace. Um, now, there's this debate, is ABM marketing or sales? It's both but it's sales for the high ticket, okay? So ABM is actually sales for the high ticket sale, right? And you have see here what's called the Leslie's Compass. So this is a methodology where you can decide which way you should go. And why is that important? It's very important to understand if your product or service is high ticket and requires, you know, if it's more expensive, it requires, you know, more uh, consultative sales, it requires more of a um, longer sales cycle and so on. Or if basic tactics work like Google Ads or SEO or things like that, it doesn't mean that those don't work in ABM. It just means that when you do Google Ads and SEO in B2B, you do them for a different purpose, right? because you do consultative sales, because you do ABM sales, you can use, for example, Google ads to um, build your awareness very well. And we've used that, for example, with LinkedIn right now to um, make our network of contacts aware that we have this event. We have used 
um, in this case, quite a bit of uh, paid ads specifically for that. So not to sell directly, but to um, uh, make our network of contacts aware that uh, we exist, this is what we do, and, and we diversify the portfolio and so on, okay? Now, again, what is AI in ABM? I think by now, I hope by now, you already know. So basically, AI can accompany each phase of the ABM. This is actually, if you remember the flywheel from Humphrey, um, a, a bit uh, interpreted, but basically it's AI that follows each of these stages, attract, engage, win, um, and support and customer support and delighting your customers. And uh, we're actually today going to touch a bit on attracting because I know this is a hot topic in ABM. How do I attract, you know, I know who my customer is. How do I get them to talk to me? How do I engage with them and so on? So this is what we're gonna spend this session on, but we're going to have a series of events like this um, that, and, and we're going to go through each of these phases so that you can implement all the process. We don't believe, as I say, in the moment, quick fix and so on. This is a process. If you don't go through all of the stages, if you don't have an overarching uh, arching strategy and go after each of these stages one by one, then just sending an email, sending a uh, LinkedIn message or something, that won't work. Um, you have to do a process with multiple stages and, and multiple steps. And for each of those, AI can help because sometimes we're excited about beginnings. We can attract even from an email or from a LinkedIn post a lot of interest. But if we don't follow up with that, then we have zero results. Now, if we do manage to go to the next step and follow up, that's awesome. But I know that most of you don't have the time, even if you know what the process is. That's why AI is so important. So AI saves you time. So you are able to do that follow up, to go through all the process. Even there's tools that will do the process for you if you configure it right. Um, now, what are some of the top uh, uses of AI in marketing, again, this is from the state of AI marketing that that, uh, that came out from HubSpot. But basically, most of the marketers use it for content, reporting on data. My colleagues will tell you why, why is AI used in sales, and you'll understand more about that. But I just wanted to give you a quick snap into why, uh, you know, why would you use it in marketing? I think this is a superficial use from my point of view. I mean, for example, um, if we consider content creation, right? I think that content creation is one of the first uses of AI. I think, you know, first thing that we saw when we got to chat GPT was, oh my God, I can write the thousand blog posts. But the challenge is that you will write a thousand blog posts that will sound exactly like the thousand blog posts you've seen before, or the thousand post of blog post chat GPT will give someone else as a result of the prompt, which we sometimes copy <laughs> from the web or copy from a source that we know and so on. And we've seen at some point that when we started asking chat GPT questions, for example, we kind of started to get the same the same results over and over again. Now, what we um, uh, do right now is we started being smarter about creating content, right? And if we're not smart, if you're just the beginning uh, at the beginning, please use some tools that will help you optimize your prompt. Um, I love the Gina AI tools, Prompt Perfect, for example which if you're not an expert in prompting, you go there, you tell it what platform, it knows more than ChatGPT, you tell it what platform you, you'd like to prompt, you tell your prompt and it's some, it will give you a better, a better one. Um, now, I love how we can use AI to learn how to do things. I think this is the best use of AI 
for marketers right now and even for sales people, right? For example, for a strategy, I can share some prompts in terms of how you can build your ABM strategy directly um, with AI. But again, what's important is to personalize it, like, you know, specifically what's your target audience, what's your message and so on. Strategy is still the most important thing, right? So we've seen that uh, AI can replicate most of what we do, but strategy is still very, very uh, important, more important than the tools that we use. Um, in here, we have some stats in terms of what kind of uh, AI marketing uh, apps uh, I used. Uh, and as you see, there's a bit more. I'm going to share with you my favorite ones, which I'm almost so sure you don't know about. Um, but specifically, I know my team loves Jasper, for example. They use Canva. Um, so they use quite a lot of chat spot for, uh, from, from HubSpot. Uh, and I will share what uh, I also like. I'd like to dive a bit deeper into buyer's journey, not to make this very theoretical. I gave you my philosophy, sort of how I see um, AI. Uh, but right now, I'd love to um, give you a bit of an in-depth and practical use of how I use AI. Now, buyer journey in B2B, this is the simplified version of the Gartner buyer journey for B2B tech. The reality, it's much more complicated than this, but on each of these phases, you can actually use a tool. And there's also enterprise grade tools, which of course are very expensive, uh, that can um, automate everything, all the process altogether, okay? But uh, I just wanted to give you this snapshot to understand how B2B sales is so different than just calling someone once, just emailing someone once, right? If you don't do the whole process, there's no way this loop will close into a sale. Um, AI in ABM strategy. I love to use AI even for ABM strategy for even digging into, for example, best case, best use cases and so on. What's interesting is that I use, for example, a tool that's called the Rationale from Gina, which is a decision-making tool. And I pasted in here uh, how I decided to put this mini series together, right? So I asked, is this a good idea or not? And I got these pros and cons, which are really not nice. There's a ton of tools for AI strategy. There's a ton of tools for AI marketing strategy. My colleagues will also share some of their favorite tools. This is one of the uh, least known, but very effective. I've seen that if you give it enough uh, data, it does quite an interesting decision-making model. Another very interesting thing that you may not know about is any word. AnyWord is an amazing tool. I used this yesterday just to showcase for our um, um, for our workshop today, for our course today, uh, how I wanted to post that, okay, we have this intensive course. Uh, initially, we thought about making it two hours, but then everybody said, oh, I don't have two hours. Please make it shorter. So we said, okay, this is a mini series. So let's start with, you know, with, with one, 1 1.5 hours, and we'll see how this goes. In any word, you can optimize basically for social media, but you can do that for, um, let's say, blog posts and so on. So what it does, you give it a prompt, you give it the persona. I love the tools that actually use the persona. And it's going to give you um, in here insights about how well will it be perceived by your network of contacts. And you can even boost the performance. So let's say you're at a 40 or a 50 and you'd like to get to an 80. It's like an index that goes all the way up to 100. And you can do that in this tool. So basically it's going to give you, you can even give it like the tone of voice and all of those amazing prompts. And I love that it's much better than ChatGPT, by the way, for social media, uh, but, but not just for any copyrighted related task. I know anywhere way before there was this hype around AI and we've been using tools like this for years. 
So uh, please go, you can make a pre-account and so on. I have no affiliation with any of the tools I'm talking about, so I cannot give discount codes and so on, but I hope it's going to be really useful. This is an amazing tool. This actually saves you a copywriter. So if you use this tool right, it saves your copywriter. Again, the mystery is not, you know, the fact that it saves you like the time of a copywriter, but do you know who's your target audience? Do you know what you should be talking about? Do you know where the value of your product or service lies? If you know all of this, any tool will help. If not, you still need someone like Juana <laughs> to help you with your strategy, right? Or you need someone like Daniel to help you with, with your uh, sales and so on. Uh, so um, this is an amazing tool, which I recommend and I love and I've been using for quite a while. Another tool that I really have used, and I was thinking of doing the presentation today with this tool, but it was a bit too much. I said, okay, we'll keep this more to the end of, of, of this mini series where I can automate basically the content for the whole training with AI. It's called Gamma App. And Gamma app, if you give it like nice prompts, um, gives you a slide, a, a deck of slides based on your prompt. Th this was like a short, I don't know, 50 character long um, prompt. And it came back with a structure, with nice graphics and so on. I, I used this for a presentation. I'm involved with a startup on neuroscience. And I used this for a presentation, which is really deeply technical in um, uh, neuroscience. And it still worked really well. So maybe you can look into this. And there's a ton of other presentation tools. But this is one of my, my favorites. Um, one second okay i did add the link so probably <laughs> that's why it uh, got to uh the next uh, one okay let's see do you still see my screen yes okay yeah. okay uh, this is a list of our tools there's a ton of tools i don't know we have hundreds of tools that we've tested and tried um and um i think that i hope that you see right now chat gpt jasper chat spot all of this yeah okay yeah. so so some of these we we definitely use on a current basis uh we're still looking of a way to integrate google bart for example i really love google bart i think it's better than um bing uh, however, I do find that Bing is more usable, right? Uh, so in terms of results, BARD is better. It's more original and, and better fact check. It doesn't aberrate so much. Uh, but in terms of usability, I find Bing um, being much better. Um, and there's a, a ton of other tools. If you want, we can provide you with a ton of tools that you can use. Um, now it's time for a bit of a poll while we take questions yeah. and we go to a really nice sections of Juan and Daniel that will take you through um, how they use um, AI in account identification in contact discovery and so on. Okay, so we'll end the first pool and we'll start the second pool. The floor is open to questions. So if you have questions to come off mute or put them in the um, chat section or whatever you feel comfortable doing. No, no question so far. Everything is so clear. Then um, I, I was wondering, um, what are you hoping to achieve by integrating AI into your sales and marketing strategy? Why I'm asking that is based on your feedback, we will um, uh, tweak the section next time so that we answer specifically, you know, these goals that you have right so that's why we're asking these questions because we want to tweak the content in such a way that it's really relevant for you okay 
Then the next question is, uh, do you believe? Okay, I think one second. Um, the next question is, have you implemented ABM in your sales strategy? Okay, I see that uh, quite a lot of people, quite the majority are, are in the early stages of implementing it. I would love to know what specifically, specifically you are actually implementing. Our sessions are quite interactive, so do come off mute. Feel free to, you know, share your thoughts, ask your questions, and so on. And the first question is, have you integrated already AI tools into your sales and marketing? Okay, well, if there's no questions, actually, I know it was more of a general introduction. I hope the tools that I shared uh, have been useful. We can, I think, start uh, into one section because we have a lot to say and little time. And uh, I'll be here and we'll see each other at the end again. Wana, do you want me to stop the share so that you can start? Uh, yes, please. I think we have a question actually in the chat window from okay. Simon. What's, what was the name of the second tool to boost social media posts you mentioned? Uh, Okoya. I can uh, type it here. Yes. Yeah, we actively use it on about a dozen accounts right now. It's integrated with everything. <laughs> And it does all the way from you know, prompting to images, to graphics, to posting, to planning. It's amazing. And the value for money is absolutely fantastic. So I highly recommend it. If you want to, we can showcase it maybe next time. I hope this is the one. I, I've shown quite a few tools. So I'm... Yeah. Uh, we have another another person in the chat who asks uh, if we have heard of autopilot. <laughs> yes, we did. We're testing autopilot right now. It's not um, very um, smart, <laughs> uh, but uh, we're uh, maybe it's just learning at this pace. Let's give it, uh, you know, the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> So actually, I'm taking the opportunity to, because it looks like this question is also from you. I think it's a glitch from Zoom because it's I see, a glitch from yeah. Zoom, yeah, so I just wanted to ask everybody if you can check your own name and maybe rename it <laughs> to your real one. <laughs> we would love to clone Loredana and have more, but... <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'd like to meet you guys as well. So, um, yeah, um, first of all, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So thank you, Loredana, for this amazing intro. Uh, I am Juana. I am uh, Loredana's partner at NNC Services. I've been working in marketing for tech companies for, for quite a while now. Like And like Loredana mentioned, both me and Daniel are in charge with business development at NNC. And we try to do what we preach. So most of the things we are talking about today are things we've tested and we are currently using into our sales and marketing processes and ABM in particular. Um, I'm really passionate about AI and technology in general. And uh, I believe this will make a difference in all ways possible. First of all, uh, by giving us a lot of free time and uh, some mental health back, why not? Like Loredana has said. <laughs> uh, and also furthermore into, into its involvement, I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of applications that will most probably resolve some of our um, greatest um, world problems. Why not? Um, okay, today I'm, I'm going to talk to you about AI for identifying and engaging target accounts, which is key in account-based marketing. Um, then we're going to talk about how to personalize the messaging and um, the approach 
towards these customers because AI helps us have this custom approach more than we would have expected. And last but not least, we're going to talk a bit about some of the engagement strategies and what are the AI powered tactics for engaging with the decision makers in our target. But let's start with account identification. Uh, we are strongly seeing a shift from manual to AI-driven account selection. And this is kind of paradoxical because many believe that you need to have this really uh, know-it-all approach where a person uh, knows everything and they know best what their target buyer is and they need to go through the entire list to make sure they are approved. However, our experiments have shown that if you manage to uh, apply the right machine learning technique, ChatGPT can help you, first of all, define your target account, but also help you identify it better. Even if you are uh, a beginner, for instance, if you are an entrepreneur at start, or if you have a new product or a new service and you are unsure about your target market, and not just this definition from a demographic point of view, but what are its pain points? What are the challenges? What is the type of content they consume? And what are the channels you should uh, go about to get to them? Uh, AI can help you do that. And this is a process that uh, before it took a lot of you know months, processes, access to data, access to studies. You didn't even know they exist. And now it's... Uh, uh, much, much easier. And I'm going to show you later on some sample prompts that can help you do that. Uh, studies already show that 80% of marketers who use AI-driven ABM outperform traditional marketing methods. And uh, there's a recent study from Salesforce that found that companies that use AI in their marketing are 1.8, so almost double times more likely to achieve the revenue goals than those that don't. So if you're still in the considering phase, uh, look up these numbers. We're going to share some with you and believe that uh, it, it really makes a difference. Uh, like I said, it all, it all comes down to um, who is your target um, and um, not what, uh, because uh, this is one common uh, mistake some of us do. We are, we are thinking B2B in terms of uh, companies targeted and less as persons we are targeting. Uh, so I'd like to have a very quick exercise with you in the chat window or even better if somebody wants to come off mute please share with us what is your ideal customer's profile so think about your business think about what you're doing and very very quickly write in the chat window what is the profile of uh, that person If we have some brave people here, maybe you want to come off mute and uh, share it live. They say we have to wait four seconds before the introverts start speaking, so <laughs> we're past it. So I'm on a uh, 50 years old CEO or board member in a distressed business. Okay, I'm on. How do you uh, define a distressed business? <laughs> About to die. Okay. <laughs> How do you identify those companies in the market I'm on? What are your tips and tricks for that? Near bankruptcy. So I'm guessing perhaps some uh, information uh, from the fiscal authorities, hiring authorities frustrated <laughs> or banks.
so guys um and like i mind but in the meantime please do share and we're gonna look over them uh, as we progress further uh sometimes we have a rough idea of what our target customer is, but we don't have a very clear definition that will enable us to develop and put into practice, into practice a good ABM process. And this is where AI can help you. You can take that broad idea and define it even further. And I'm going to, to share with you some, uh, some scripts we use for that. Uh, I actually saved here the, the exact replies so we got previously from ChatGPT. We didn't want to kind of waste time for, for it to converse with us. Uh, and let me see if I can um, share it live. Okay. So there you go. By the way, we're going to share all this with you in our follow-up email. So make sure you have all the contact details when you registered. Um, these are, this is, for instance, a script that we have used in order to develop the buyer persona for B2B Academy. So the exact business we are we are now representing through through these trainings. And you can see it it progresses based on the things you add as additional questions. So first of all, we put in uh, a mix of resources. And then uh, we ask him to, to ask us seven questions to prepare and provide a clear buyer persona. Uh, we got this summary and then we got the questions and we asked him back to, to answer these questions for b2bacademy.com and then to provide us with the best recommendation of buyer personas. And we got this general basic demographic uh, characteristics first, then the goals and motivations, the challenges and pain points, the preferred channels of communication. So if, if we were going to, for instance, do the same with Iman's general <laughs> uh, description, and we were going through the exact same process, we would be able to get to a more specific definition like this, which is key when it comes up to the next steps in account-based marketing. Uh, like, you know, these preferred channels of communication, now we know where these people are more active and so on. And we actually, based on these characteristics, we have the two recommended buyer personas defined, which we can share with our marketing team now, and then they can further um, customize the campaigns and the communication around that. And further on, uh, we have recommendations of what we can also focus more on if you want to prioritize things and, and so on. Again, we are going to, to share all this, uh, all this with you. Now, um, let me go back to my presentation. <clears throat> So feel free to use this to test it and to adjust it for, for your own business. And obviously you can find many more out there. Like Loredana said, you can use prompt generators to generate your own even more accurate ones. Now, why do we need to do our research and how? Once we identified those customer profiles, this is the first step we need to do before engaging with them. Um, <clears throat> studies say that top performers do more research. So more than three quarters say they always perform research before reaching out to prospects um, compared to, you know, 47% for, for the other ones. And this is key. Uh, and AI helps you in very little time do a lot more research than you were able to do manually before. You know, remember the times where you used to go in, search for every person, every company, um, information about our buyer persona and so on. We have this at hand. We only put have to put uh, those into the prompt and then we'll get all the information we need. Even further, <clears throat> 
I'd like to, to tell you a bit more about the next step. So how do we personalize at scale? How do, you, do we use AI to tailor messaging content? Because AI tools allow us to do that. Uh, and studies say that marketers nowadays use, almost half of them use AI tools to create content, to write copy, to create images, and create outlines. Um, and funny thing is that also on the other side, 28% of marketers use generative AI to create and answer emails. And this is where the the process optimization comes into the uh, in, into place. Uh, once you have some templates, it will save you a lot of time yeah, and also make the customer feel that the approach is really, 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 really personal. Um, now, I would like to share one of my favorite tools when it comes to personalization of approach. Um, Crystal Nose is actually an AI tool that is used by many, many corporations, become uh, big names like um, Accenture, Google, and Microsoft. Their sales teams and their marketing teams use it. It's GDPR compliant, which is a, a major thing. And basically, it's a personality data platform that supports interaction and personalization with your target pros prospects. And I'm going to show you how it works. While you do uh, the preparations, so you can see it. Uh, up. Yeah. While you do yeah. the preparations, Juana, I will share an um, example. I recently tested this with one of the people that attended our ABM course, and we were testing what Crystal does. Uh, this was in a one on one session, um, and uh, he couldn't get a reply from a marketing manager to a, from a retail store in the UK. He was trying for a couple of years with that marketing manager. And we did this with Crystal. He got the reply in 24 hours. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> if you are not convinced, I, I even have him on record. Like I asked for a video testimonial about the, this particular tool. Yeah, and again, guys, again, we're not associated with any of this. That, so that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, we're not partners. We don't have any commission for a crystal. Actually, we use the free version. By the way, you can also use it before uh, you decide to implement it into your company. Uh, the free version allows you to um, research uh, free pro uh, ten profiles per month, uh, which, if you have an ABM approach sometimes is enough, especially if you have more salespeople. But let me tell you about how it works. It's actually based on the DISC personality system. So uh, it once you go to their website, make an account, then if you have the time and that's recommended, put in your own profile there. This is based uh, on a questionnaire. You answer some questions uh, just so you will know your own personality like I know it here uh, because it also gives you recommendations based on the way you match. Your own personality matches with your target uh, prospect's personality. Then it integrates into Chrome or any other browser that you have and it syncs with LinkedIn. Like for instance, you can see here that um, I have it as an add-on on Chrome and I took Loredana's profile as an example. Um, I can already see her personality here. And what's most important, it gives me some general ideas of how to communicate with her. But then again, even further into the process, based on um, the step in the buyer's journey that prospect is, it gives you many more other recommendations. For instance, if I will uh, say I am doing proposal and negotiation, I will get some other recommendations on how to sell. But when it comes to, to the messages and uh, personalization, the most important resource here are the email templates. I already have here some very useful templates like 
how to schedule a meeting with Loredana. I have a sample and based on her recommendation, I can see uh, how to address some pricing concerns, um, how to invite her to a webinar and so on. And guys, we have used some of this uh, for, for this webinar and for other events and they work. Um, so it's AI that's helping you personalize messages. These are also integrated. Similar tools are integrated into email marketing um, um, tools like uh, HubSpot or other CRMs, and you can use them at scale as well. So based on the information you have in your database about your uh, prospect, about your customer or the activity they do, they will help you actually automize this personalization and send custom messages uh, to each and everyone. You know, previously we used to just personalize on tokens, right? We had information like uh, first name, last name, company, and so on, and all the messages sounded the same. Now we are able to move a step further and AI allows us to have a very, very custom, and like Loredana said in the beginning, you won't even realize that somebody didn't write it by hand after analyzing very thoroughly <laughs> what you have done in your, personal, your um, personality. Now, let me go back to uh, my presentation. Uh, another thing uh, I wanted to share with you is how to use ChatGPT for tailored content because Crystal is one tool, but um, ChatGPT is also very used nowadays for customizing content. Uh, so Simon is asking me, do you know if this works with automated messaging tools um, such as linked helper um, if you are asking about crystal nose um, it doesn't integrate it doesn't give you the personality so linked helper won't be able to pull out the personality and to bring the right custom message um, so just very frankly no but this is more of um, let's say for an ebm approach so when you have fewer contacts, your target account lists, it's better to do this in a more manual manner. However, I'm pretty sure Lean Helper is working on uh, developing their own integrations. Uh, I know some are already there and I'm pretty sure they will be able to customize messages based on the LinkedIn activity, the likes, the affinities, the picture uh, you have at the profile and so on. So um, we're not yet there, but things are uh, developing. Um, OK, so this is just a screenshot of how you can uh, use it to personalize content. And this is from a marketing perspective. Um, we use this, for instance, to optimize our uh, newsletter subject lines. And uh, we're going to share this thread further on with you. Um, but it came up with some very interesting um, results, especially uh, based on the um, statistics we put in there uh, from our newsletter platform. I'm going to go back here and let me see if I can pull it up. OK, so here it is. Um, it was this you know, very simple prompt, act as the best copywriter in the world. By the way, this is uh, a Good tip. We uh, many of us uh, forget this. Uh, you can use role play, so make sure you tell ChatGPT it has to to have a certain role. And what we did was actually uploaded a file. So we only had the file, um, the Excel um, with the newsletter subject lines and open rays, and uh, it actually analyzed it um, and came back with some conclusions. And further on, um, we asked for some recommendations. So using the data uh, it gathered, 
uh, it uh, suggested some optimizations for our existing subject lines. Then obviously we went back and forth with some of our feedback. You know, it's only as good as you interact with it and you you give it more uh, things to tap into. And it obviously uh, went into our game and came back with some, some very good uh, subject lines for our next newsletters. Now, this is just an example. There are many more you can ways you can use it for uh, blog posts, for social media, posts and for very custom messages into into the sales process <clears throat> okay and last but not least uh, let's talk a bit about what are some engagement strategies uh, that can be Power, uh, powered by AI nowadays. So first of all, like I said, we can have some very, very personalized experiences. Um, we can craft, you know, content and proposals that resonate personally with each customer uh, by analyzing their uh, behavior, their preferences and their past interactions. So not just based on the information we have, but also on the, um, on the things they do, on the activities they perform. Streamlining processes. Um, we now can smooth out our marketing and sales operations. Uh, and obviously this is about automating the routine and harnessing all, all this data to inform our uh, choices, which, you know, allow our teams to devote more time on the most important part. Uh, Real-time decision-making, um, thanks to AI tools, we can see how our campaigns perform as they un unfold. So we can have uh, real-time notifications about something that's happening or that's not performing well, so we can pivot very quickly and reorganize. Marketing automation, which is basically, you know, AI has been here for, for quite a while, but now it's kind of being uh, uh, brought back into the light. Um, if you don't already use any marketing automation platform like HubSpot, Eloqua, and so on, uh, you should definitely consider because the most important thing is with this AI revolution that's been happening since the beginning of 2020 through many of these platforms have extra improved their platforms. And I'll give you an example. HubSpot has now its own uh, a conversational AI tool, which is called ChatSpot, and it's integrated with the CRM. It and it allows you to actually do all these things in an automatic manner. So um, like what you said uh, previously, Simon, if it works with Lint Helper, it works with your CRM. So if you have the contacts from Lint Helper imported into your CRM, how, a, a tool like ChatSpot will allow you to do that based on all the information you put in there. And last but not least, predictive analysis, for a competitive ad advantage, we've seen a boost of uh, enhancement into tools that do predictive analysis just due to the fact that they can now um, access many, many more data uh, through AI. Um, I'd like to, you know, uh, keep you hanging because like Loredana said, we're gonna have, it's a mini series um, of courses. So uh, make sure you register for our next session. If you wanna learn more about tailor messaging and how to use ChatGPT and not only ChatGPT for tailor messaging. Uh, so make sure if your colleagues from your sales teams are not here to invite them for the next time because we're gonna share much more out of that. So guys, are there any questions?
You can uh, use the chat window and also we will leave in our contact details. So if you don't have any questions now, um, you can send them by email. We still have a bit to go announcing for the people that are uh, trying to leave. I know that it's more time to ask of you, but I think that a very interesting session about AI tools is coming. If you don't have the time, that's fine. Uh, but if you do have the time, uh, Daniel will share some of the tools he's using in the sales process. Um, I'd still like to give the floor for a couple of minutes for Juana's um, Q&A session, because I think what she showcased is really interesting. I love how um, you share the templates uh, for prompting. I think that that proves how important it is to give it like uh, the right um, the, the the right information. Um, one of our colleagues was saying just the other day, you realize that you have to uh, put the 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 prompts like uh, really simple, stupid, right? So uh, very simple in a very uh, like you would explain it to uh, um, someone that doesn't get it at all. And the more information we can give that person, the better it is. Um, now you still have uh, uh, on the side uh, a bit about the, the uh, two more questions and I promise I'm done and we'll share the results of the poll at the end. So please don't, uh, don't go away. Um, do we have questions for Wana? If not, I have to tell you a joke, but then I'm terrible at, jo at jokes. So <laughs> the, uh, I think that it's better to have some, some questions. No, no questions for Wana. Okay, uh, I'm going to transition to Daniel with a joke that I'm sure he will enjoy because right now ChatGPT has a major failure. What did the AI say during a marketing meeting? It said, I'm processing, I'm still processing, Okay, let's target everyone. <laughs> so that's what it said. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and, and sometimes that is the case uh, when you're doing uh, mass, uh, mass marketing. But today we're talking about uh, account-based marketing. And uh, yes, I did have some chat GPT prompt to, to show today, but uh, as all uh, uh, technologies, sometimes uh, 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 they're not that perfect as we might assume they would be. But uh, I have backup. I have a backup plan. First of all, I'm Daniel. Have around 15 plus. I would say uh, exactly like Loredana. I would add 10 more, but then you would uh, you would say that I started at uh, <laughs> 10 years, something like that. But it is indeed a, a passion that I always had for for IT, uh, <clears throat> and uh, then uh, switched to uh, uh, implementing IT and helping uh, companies grow through. Uh, 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 IT backed up solutions and uh, sales processes that are automated for the uh, 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 vast majority of them or, or the entire process to be to be exact. I'm uh, very focused on automation. Um, been conducting some uh, some training in these areas and uh, also uh, I founded an NGO because I uh, love animals and I want to rescue uh, <laughs> as many as possible. That'll be uh, in a nutshell. Then, uh, as I told you, we're going to skip the, the GPT prompt. And uh, uh, like I was uh, talking to you, and uh, one I was also mentioning about uh, personalizing at scale, um, it's very good sometimes to revisit an app or a tool because they um, sometimes they evolve, they add new capabilities, uh, new options. And uh, uh, this type of app uh, that I'm talking about is called Vidyard, for example. And uh, we used and still use Vidyard to record ourselves on uh, various web pages or to do it, to do prospecting in a custom manner, to uh, interact with uh, with people by telling their names and recording a video on their uh, LinkedIn profile, for example. And recently, they uh, opened up a new category of services that they provide, and it's called uh, Prospector. And now, let me just share and I'll see, show you exactly. As you can see, this is a tool for recording a, a live video, but once you get inside, you'll find out that right now we have a pretty neat option that is called Prospector. And what this allows you to do 
is to uh, target certain companies clearly uh, from certain geographical areas under certain industries and uh, with various other filters that you can set over here. And what AI will do over here, it will generate you an automatic uh, email based on uh, those uh, leads that, uh, that it finds for you automatically. And uh, you can even send it from here. So I go to territory. I will uh, go abroad right now. And I would say uh, United States, for example, but you can go even narrow. Okay. I will say that I'm looking to talk to people from information technology and services. I will add this industry as well. As you can see, you can add even more. I can uh, pick a company size, okay? So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going for the big accounts, okay? Okay, and I want to talk to maybe the owner, okay? I can go even, uh, even more narrow to sales, to marketing, uh, to operations, things like that. And now I have these, uh, these filters assigned. Second, I have my sharing. Okay. This uh, uh, sharing bar is blocking my view over here. Okay. Uh, so now these leads will be uh, in the, because I'm sharing you with the free plan, the option, this lead will be generated uh, maybe one times or two times per day. But I already have some emails that I generated earlier over here. And as you can see, these were leads that Vidya prospected for me in my, uh, in my name and found these people that are the owners of these companies. And it already generated this, uh, these emails. As you can see, you can just say what you're doing as a company, NNC Services, uh, clearly is a full stack digital marketing agency. And now Vidya, Vidya knows this about us and it automatically generated these emails and I can uh, decide to uh, simply email it from, uh, send it from here or send it in bulk. Uh, this would be uh, what, what's new with uh, Vidya and I found it pretty interesting because I can uh, even organize my, my email sending campaign from the same tool and just uh, uh, use this to generate content, make it custom, and uh, outreach to more people at once. Then what else I'm using in, uh, in account-based marketing is Apollo. Apollo is a tool that is great for a lot of things like uh, researching contacts, researching information about uh, companies, um, about their employees, and also uh, organizing email sequences and uh, uh, automating your campaigns, clearly, like I told you earlier. So what I want to do right now is go into the search uh, option. Okay. I can either search for people and I'll, or search for companies. Today we're talking about ABM, so I'll search for companies. Sorry for the delay in my laptop. Things are uh, going... Uh, slower than usual today just to give you you know a bit of a time to breathe daniel mm -hmm. is right now after a six hour course on abm and sales with a large business so i think that uh, we can get why even the laptop is a bit <laughs> tired i hope we'll send you some energy daniel <laughs> I thought it was from my laptop, but actually ChatGPT is, is down uh, worldwide. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yep. So, okay, I'm looking for companies again. Uh, as you can see, I can uh, I have a lot of filters over here. I have territories, I have uh, account location, number of employees, technologies. This is a pretty neat uh, filter, you know, because uh, maybe I'm looking to talk only with people in this case that are using, are running HubSpot. So I want to start the conversation in that area. Maybe I want to talk to companies that have been through around the funding uh, that they are in C, in Angel or Series A, B, C, as you can imagine. Um, I also have some uh, some signals over here, and uh, there uh, they uh, you know they uh, the tool is scraping uh, the internet to find exactly if uh, they posted the company posted something about a new client that they signed. Maybe they're cutting costs. Uh, so that would be for us maybe a good option to uh, 
uh, get our foot in the door and uh, tell them that uh, they can outsource the marketing uh, services to us to, to reduce their costs. And also I have buying intent over here and I can, uh, if uh, over here, you can see if somebody from that company looked uh, for, in our case, marketing services or in, uh, in other cases, the, the services that you're providing. And you can target those companies with the right uh, message at the right time and hopefully uh, the right person. Um, there's, like I told you, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do with, uh, with Apollo, but mostly for uh, these signals and the buying intent, I would definitely go for this tool. And also because it, uh, it provides a huge database of GDPR compliant uh, contact emails and, uh, and even, uh, even phone numbers. That would be in a nutshell. Uh, I did try to have a backup uh, with Bing and I, uh, I asked him to also, I personalize my, uh, my AI bot, by the way, and I, I use please because uh, when, they, when they'll take over, maybe they'll, uh, they'll remember me that I talked <laughs> with. <laughs> so as you can see, I, I, you, can, you can go as creative as possible uh, uh, with these prompts and uh, trial and error is, uh, is the way. Over here, I wanted to just best practices for developing an effective account-based marketing uh, uh, strategy to help me target C-level executives uh, from the technology industry. And you can see, I already have something to read, you know? <laughs> then just go, uh, go custom, uh, ask, uh, ask him to uh, make it shorter or you evolve around the subject or uh, give you a certain example based on a, on a certain company because you can browse, okay, do uh, help me uh, devise uh, an account-based marketing plan around, to target Microsoft as a company, for example, and so on and so forth. I think uh, uh, there's, uh, the, the possibilities are, are endless with, uh, with AI. And that would yeah. be uh, it from my, from my side, but if I have any questions from, uh, from the audience, I'm, uh, I'd be more than happy to to talk to you about uh, the tools that I use, and also I'd be more than happy to jump on uh, on one-on-one -on -one calls to to explore together the possibilities of AI in uh, in sales in general. So. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. This was really interesting. Um, I just remember that um, uh, what you said, you know, that uh, you have to check back because all of the tools right now are integrating AI. And of course, that uh, soon enough, this will be mainstream. Like, I think nobody will work um, without being AI um, powered, <laughs> let's say, in one way or another. Um, two things actually caught my attention in what you presented. Uh, the thing with buyer intent, um, now Apollo is a cheaper version of Zoom Info, but what's the difference is that uh, Zoom Info, which has in the back a company that uh, they bought, which was Discover Org, uh, it's like more than a dozen years since we are working with Discover Org, which have direct B2B interviews with high level stakeholders that tell them, you know, when someone is replaced in the team, what technology they're adopting and so on. Bar intent in that case is real by intent. So it's interview based. Uh, now, what Apollo did is they have some triggers. So even you manually, you can set some traps. So let's say we know that each marketing manager that gets hired or each sales manager that gets hired has to do a sales strategy at the beginning of their term, right? Which means that if I hit them at the right time, not in the first month, not after the third month, usually it takes between the month two and month three for them to develop this strategy then I can become, you know, I can start a conversation, I can be part of their planning, and I can introduce some creative campaigns, and they'll probably work with uh, NNC, let's say. Um, now, uh, this is a bar intent that you can set up by yourself, and you can do that with Google Alerts, you can do that with LinkedIn Sales Navigator Alerts, and so on. Uh, and, and the more of these triggers that you have, the bar intent is even better, right? So, for example, when they are hiring a new marketing position, where they're building a new marketing plan, and so on and so forth, you can develop. 
Now, the difference between cheap and expensive tools for buyer intent, and we are also know about Enrich and many, many other tools that do ABM and forecasting and buyer intent and so on. The difference is how many triggers do they have and how accurate are they, right? So for Zoom Info, they're much more accurate than Apollo. However, we found that even Apollo buyer intent starts to be better and better. So we saw it early on, which was not very relevant, but right now it is. So that was really interesting from what you said. And um, also, I believe that, you know, in a general session like this, we only can share some of the, 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 the like top, top uh, you know, top, top, little, very little uh, things uh, and overviews. One on one session with Daniel or with Wana or with myself would give you like a pretty really personalized, you know, one on one time. And you can ask, we love to contribute, we love to share uh, our, our knowledge. We believe in this, so, you know, the power of <laughs> shared experiences and share the um, um, thoughts and ideas and so on. And this is how we ourselves learn and develop. So do please take a session with Daniel, one hour myself, and would love to see your particular case and how we can um, help you. Um, are there questions for Daniel? I will leave my LinkedIn profile in this. <laughs> okay. In so, uh... Good. Uh, then it's time for a well-deserved uh, review. Um, and today, so again, this is the first session of a series of sessions. We'd love to hear your feedback because based on this, then we know if this was valuable or not. And we know how we can adjust to um, whatever your expectations are. Our knowledge is very broad. Sometimes we can become very technical. The examples or experiences we've had, we have in mind may not be the most relevant for you, right? However, I believe that the more we um, have your feedback and we take into account this feedback, the more we can contribute to the community. This is actually an initiative we had in the pandemic, we wanted to contribute to the business ecosystem. It was such a big change from going offline, everything to online. I know that things are back to, you know, person-to-person -person events and person-to-person -person meetings. But right now we have this AI component, which definitely changes the game. That's why we felt that it's time to refresh these this, this sessions and come back to, to um, these initiatives. Uh, of course, that the technology evolves right now. Each of us will have our own chat GPT. I don't know if you heard the news, but they just launched GPTs. And uh, with this, uh, what they'll do is basically each of us will be able to custom prompt chat GPT, give it the data, give it the info, and we'll be able to take that and share it with someone else, for example. I shared the screenshot from their blog post. Please check it out. They're still rolling it out. I just got the news that I'm in the beta testing phase right now. So um, I'll keep you posted on how this goes. Um, I think that we had an amazing session. Thank you so much for contributing and participating. Uh, I tried to give you an overview of what ABM, what AI, what AI in ABM. Uh, Wana had some amazing shares into contact discovery and uh, Daniel into how you can engage. And, and both of them have such a wide knowledge and experience that uh, I'm sure that they've seen many, many cases and um, they'll share some more over the next sessions. I look forward to learning more from them and for you. We do this for you. We learn from you and, and we're very grateful for uh, spending your time with us. We'll try to keep it to an hour, an hour and a half max. We've seen already that, you know, some of the people are uh, busy and uh, they couldn't stay over the hour. But I very much appreciate um, you being here today. If you have questions, um, we are here. Uh, what's next for you? First of all, we have a boot camp, an ABM boot camp, and a couple of you here have been already part of this boot camp. Started in, in February. I'd love to extend a personal invitation. 
we handpick the people that are part of the bootcamp, uh, but you'll get the link in the email if you'd like to register. We'll have this series of mini events. The, the, the co course next week um, is at the same time uh, as today, and it's going to be live streamed again. And we have our own community with about 500 uh, business decision makers right now in marketing sales. But what I love more, a lot of entrepreneurs, I think we have more than 300 entrepreneurs of small and medium B2B businesses, which were collaborate, ask questions and so on. So do uh, join that community. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, it's been an amazing session. And I look forward to uh, your questions, uh, comments uh, in the LinkedIn uh, event and do reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Loredana. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. And see you soon. Good to see you, Greg. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.